What's up, everyone? It's Q from Retro Q Game, and I know I've been kind of patchy and sketchy in all the the last couple of weeks or so, but uh, I've barely had some time to myself at all. And the little bit of time I have had, I've mostly been streaming, just catching up on some retro stuff. So I want to kind of, I'm kind of winding down after a big busy period. So I'm I'm kind of just getting back into this a little bit. And even though BlizzCon it was over on the weekend just gone i was actually away at a convention here in ireland myself so i didn't get to to really look at anything until today i i got a little bit of tiny bit of info here or there i mean we all know there's the whole sombra thing for overwatch and all but specifically i'm here i want to talk about the diablo stuff i've been wanting to get back into diablo 3 i've been playing it a little bit more over the last couple of weeks whenever i got a quick 20 minutes or something like that and yeah that's basically it so i do want to go over a couple of the, the things from from blizzcon all diablo related mainly because there's some good stuff in there and i'm i, I know some of it and I'm, I'm really really happy about some of it so over over the course of the weekend at blizzcon we all know that 2016 is or if you didn't know now you do 2016 is the 20 year anniversary of diablo the franchise so Originally launched on December 31st in 1996 is when Diablo first launched on PC way, way back in the day. So that was a long time. I remember playing Diablo back in the day. I didn't play it for the first time until about two years later. I didn't play it until I had a Windows 98 computer, so it would have been at least 98. But it would have been about 98, 99 before I first played Diablo. My uncle actually had Diablo from just like a week or two weeks after it first came out over here. He had a Windows 95 computer, but he didn't live here at the time. So he le he loaned it to me once I actually got a or well our family got a Windows 98 computer and he showed me how to play it I loved it straight away and that was that was how I got into Diablo and just kind of games like this the dungeon crawler series so or the dungeon crawler genre so that's how I got into all that and I've loved it and I've been hooked pretty much ever since now because of the 20 year anniversary what they're doing, what Blizzard are doing, is they are announcing patch 2.4.3. And that is basically going to be called the Darkening of Tristram. Now, Tristram, of course, as we all know, is the original town from Diablo 1. So, what they're doing is if you go to Old Tristram in Adventure Mode during the month of January 2017, they have put in a new portal... Into, into that location in Diablo 3, where you get teleported off into what's basically a remake or a remaster, whatever you want to call it. We call it a remake. It, it tr teleports you off to a remake of Diablo 1 in Diablo 3. Now, it's, ba it's almost the entire thing. If I remember right, Diablo 1 did have 20 floors. Diab the Darkening of Tristram Remake has 16 floors, in co including a couple of bosses and all of that as well. Some old school enemies, old school items. It's just nostalgia all over the place. And it's going to be cool. There's also a bunch of stuff that they've said is going to be in it that they haven't talked about. So, naturally, there's, uh, there's more to look forward to than that. Personally, I can't wait. Over the next month or month and a half or so, I'm going to kind of try ramp up my gameplay just to kind of get back into the swing of things usually i'll run through one quick dungeon in adventure mode or something like that or one quick rift and just leave it but i do want to get back into it a lot more i know oh god what am i looking for oh yeah i know i can i'll have two of my friends to play with as well because they're a person one of them he has it installed for whenever the other guy is actually waiting for this to so we can get back going on there so that's going to be cool. There's also a mode in there as well that, that what they call Glorious Retrovision. It will kind of change the graphical style back to the old Diablo 1 style. And it will change the the 8-directional eight, uh, eight movement instead of just uh, what we have now, which is basically walk anywhere. So patch 2.4.3 will probably be out in... 
in January or else at the very end of December. But it does hit the public test realm next week if you're one of those guys. Personally, I don't play on PTRs or test servers myself usually, so you get the idea. They've also mentioned the armory, which basically means you can save a couple of different gear sets, including gems and your can I cube powers. So it just makes it easier between swapping, swapping between stuff based on who you're playing with or the style you need or whatever it is, you know, to whatever kind of content you're going to do. So that's handy. There's a, it's a very similar, similar style to MMOs. And even in some, say, first person shooters, like you can have different loadouts based on, you know, whatever you need. So it's pretty cool. And uh, it's going to be possibly, possibly useful. Uh, I would, it, could be nice to have a couple of different armor sets set aside but my big issue with it is with how often blizzard can change some of the perks and powers and stuff you know it, it might render some of that stuff useless and some of it moot i mean i remember when they changed my tal rasha bonus in diablo 3 and it completely ruined my gameplay style so yeah that's that wouldn't be fun to come back online after a patch maybe not playing after six months and suddenly four of your five gear sets are absolutely worthless so you get the idea on top of all that as well they have mentioned that they're going to bring in a new class a new job into the game which is the necromancer so if you're a diablo 2 player you'll remember the necromancer it's not technically the same guy uh, same guy or girl as the Diablo 2 Necromancer, it's just the same class. It's, it is another Nephilim, uh, but you can obviously pick a male or female Necromancer. Now, this one, uh, I, I should go back one or two little things. As it's said at the moment, the Darkening of Tristram is the patch 2.4.3 is actually, it seems to be just part of a regular content update. So it seems to be just a standard free patch. Whereas this new one, the Necromancer, is actually part of its own specific paid content pack. You do require both of the, the, the base game for Diablo 3 and the Reaper of Souls expansion to use the necromancer pack so like i said you do have to pay additional for that they haven't said when it's going to be out just that it's going to be next year uh, and that it is going to be a paid for pack that there's no actual price for on just yet at the moment i'm just going to quickly go into the second one here it's all set on two separate pages. Uh, if you're a console player, if you're playing uh, Diablo 3 Ultimate Evil Edition on PS4 or Xbox One, you will now have the ability, or, well, soon have the ability to play Seasons. So, Seasons are coming to console. Personally, I think they're arguably useless. I don't play them because I, I know what they do and all. It, it just doesn't do it for me. But the... Uh, seasons have been something that have been requested on consoles for a long time and now that they're actually going on there and while i don't give a crap about it i'm not completely blind to the fact that a lot of people will probably make use of this and for them to offer like more features and more stuff on multiple platforms for free i'd be a fucking idiot to say that or i no, i'd be a fucking fanboy to just say that uh, it's a terrible idea i don't like the idea of seasons i like the idea of other people being able to play seasons for no additional cost that on a platform that it was never available to them before no problem with that whatsoever so it's the usual season stuff chances are you probably already know what that is so i'm not going to go into detail about it they do have they're also bringing in a crafting mat storage section as well so the main it doesn't really give a a, a huge like it, it it's a new tab basically to store all your crafting mats so we all know how that goes you know you open up the it looks to be just in the i'm not it looks to be just in the regular chest or sorry the regular inventory rather than the actual chest itself so it looks to be a new tab there is a screenshot of it but obviously all that stuff is subject to change and all too and they haven't said full details of how it'll go so it'll save up a couple of inventory slots i know personally i have a ridiculous amount of of crafting mats uh, i'm one of those people who just doesn't throw stuff away so i have i probably have like a page of jewel an entire tab of jewels an entire tab of crafting mats and then i just have god knows what else on the rest of them i've got several other tabs with stuff dotted around them so it'll it's kind of curious to see how uh, how much space this will free up for me so it uh, it also uh, it because of all this it will allegedly be much easier to transmute items using the cube so 
Which makes sense, really. I mean, I, I haven't used the cube in a while. I can't remember if it will pull them from your stash or if you have to have them in your inventory. I don't remember. But if they're all on the tab, it won't matter. So that's pretty handy for, for people who are using that. As you'd expect, there's going to be new items, new enemies, new skills, new weapons, etc., etc. So they're going to be improving the rifts and the greater rifts you know, as you'd expect, and there's going to be new legendary items with new legendary powers as well, so the powers is the key part, so it's going to be new stuff that can probably apply to original items or certain items before, I know sometimes they have done it so that it it's not retroactive and you'd have to refine it with the new stuff on it, we'll see how it goes, there's also... If uh, a new thing they're adding in is if you complete a greater rift without dying, you'll actually get a free additional chance to upgrade your legendary gem. Uh, I know if, in my case in particular, I have a pretty a couple of pretty high level legendary gems, and they're getting me damn hard to get an upgrade to. And even even when you do get the chance to to upgrade it, eh, you're looking at like ten percent if not less, so it can be a bit of a nightmare, so an extra, an additional 10% chance, I wouldn't have a problem with there as well, so that's pretty cool, they've also, they're going to be making the new, the new system to dye stuff, D dye as in dye the colour, is going to be much easier, it's, she also has a new tab that's going to basically, sorry, Miriam the Mystic, is basically going to have a new tab, which it, it essentially works as the interface for literally just changing colors quickly back and forth back and forth that's it so you don't need to teleport around the world run around towns or anything like that trying to find a vendor with the exact specific color you want of the the dye you want or run into your stash and doing it that way it's basically all done in one place now and what also the fact that i like as well is they're adding a couple of new zones so I don't know if this is all of them, but they have mentioned a couple of them at the moment anyway. So they've had said that these are obviously going to be adventure mode zones because we all know that the story is kind of set and linear at this point. But the, the adventure mode, you know, it's going to have new zones. The, there's going to be new bounties and new events and probably new enemies specific to the new zones. So what we know of the moment is the, the what they've called the Moors. So the moors are described as a desolate, fog-enshrouded moors, and they've been occupied by armies and empires over time. So, you know, God knows what. It would probably be a lot of skeletons and undead stuff there based on, the you know, the armies and fallen soldiers from the armies and empires. Under that, or other than that, you've got uh, beneath them then lies the Temple of the Firstborn, a place of evil unlike anything you've seen before. Catch a glimpse of these two new areas below and yeah, blah, blah, blah. So that's just uh, the usual kind of blurb they have. I'm just reading off the, the Blizzard launcher here, guys. So if you actually go on to the battle.net launcher, you can actually uh, go to the news and find it there. But uh, they're also adding the, the new ability to do challenge rifts as well. So the challenge rift is basically one you can, you can customize and build yourself. It's coming in at some point next year. And yeah, so you're going to be able to, you know, pick and choose the kind of stuff, the kind of handicap you're going to be playing with. Now, I don't mean it, you know, it's not going to, it might not restrict certain things, but it might be, say, I don't know, guys, like, maybe you have a setup that you can hit one enemy really strong, but your AoE damage is pretty low, so maybe you can, you know, you can challenge yourself by adding in lots of fast tons of enemies with lots of health or whatever it's going to be it's going to be pretty interesting i do like the fact that they're supporting it i know a lot of people were looking forward to an announcement of, of i was going to say blizzard 4 of diablo 4 which obviously didn't happen but the fact that we're we're getting an update and we're getting a, essentially a, a remake of diablo 1 in diablo 3 is all pretty good so it's getting pretty much pretty much on par support for what i expect at least i mean it it could have just stopped to be honest <laughs> I know personally though, I was expecting a, if if an announcement of anything, I was expecting a new expansion rather than something like Diablo 4, but we'll see how it goes anyway, there's, a, there's BlizzCon next year obviously, there's a whole year's worth of gaming news, there's obviously E3 and Gamescom and God knows fucking everything at this point, but anyway, let me know what you're most interested in in the new Diablo upcoming stuff. I know personally, I'm looking forward to returning to Tristram. I'm going to hunt down that butcher. I'm going to kick the crap out of him. I know he's in technically the, in Diablo 3 as well, but I'm I'm looking forward to kicking the old the crap out of the old one. Lazarus, I'm coming for you. Diablo, I'm coming. Actually, Diablo's not even in the first one, isn't he not? If I remember right, the final enemy is Ball. 
I can't remember. It's been nearly 20 years since I've played it. But you get the idea. Let me know all that anyway, what you're looking forward to, what you'd like to see, and what's most important to you in the comment section below. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter. Details in the description below. Thank you for watching, and I will see you on the rest of the videos in my channel.